covenant in my life. Father, fulfill your covenant in my life, in my life. Fulfill your covenant in my life. Lord, justify your covenant in my life. Pray this morning and say, Lord, justify, fulfill your covenant in my life. Father, I will not live here the same way I came. Let your covenant, Father, be fulfilled in my life. Let your covenant be established in my life. Pray that prayer, somebody here. Precious name, we have all prayed. Amen. Jam your hands for the Lord. My topic this morning is seeing as God. Seeing as God. And we are drawing a passage from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, from verse 1 to 7. 1 Samuel 16 from verse 1 to 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go, and I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an hypha with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you 
what you shall do. And you shall anoint unto me whom I name unto you. And Samuel did that which the Lord spoke, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of, it, of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, peaceably. I have come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or the height of his stature because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Man looketh on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart. And as he says, but the Lord said unto Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height or his height. I have rejected him. The Lord does not see things the way you see them. The Lord does not see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord plays the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Our purpose this morning is to guide us and to change the way we see things. The way you see and process things matters a lot. Everyone here has a visual processor in your body. Because you live your life from your own perception and perspective. The way you see things matters. The activities and all that happens around you is determined by the way you see and interpret things. Everything that happens around you is carried out by the way you see things. You relate to God at your present spiritual perception of who he is. Whatever service you render to God is because of the way you see him. If you see him differently, you will relate to him differently. The way you see God and value him is the way you will relate to him. How do you treat God? A singer say, as a G-O-D or a D-O-G, how do you treat God? How do you see him? You serve and worship from your own level of perception. On a serious note, the way you see God is the way you relate to him. Some of you see him as someone that demands extra commitment. Some of us see him as one that is worthy of worship. Sincerely, everyone here does not have the same level of divine perception. No. No, no, no. And that is what determines the way you relate to God. If God, if you see him as someone very important in your life, you will relate to him in that way. You know, Jesus healed a blind man and he asked him, how do you see what do you see? He said, I see men as trees. 
Jesus looked at that man and said, this man needs a second touch before he starts climbing human beings as trees. I see men as trees. Amen, trees. Some people are not in this church. Ask your neighbor, are you here? Are you here? Ask your neighbor, amen, trees. Amen, trees. If you're here, shout a better amen. amen. Ask your neighbor, are you a tree? Are you a tree? And another pastor said, if you have given that man a knife, we slaughter everybody because he taught men and trees. Cut, cut, cut. You see, the way you see things matters. You judge people from your level of spiritual and natural perception. The way you see people determines the way you relate to them. The way you see your husband, the way you see your brother, the way you see your sister. You know, some people, they, they say every family has a different perception, every individual. Some see their husband as honey, sweet, this, and some see their husband as husband. Husband. Wife. You are a wife. So they relate. The information in you determines how you see things. And who you are. Oh, there's, a, there's a video I'm supposed to play for you, but I'll bring it next week. I hope you'll be in church next week. A dog that saw itself on the mirror and was chasing himself. Running around the room thinking it's another dog. He will run from this side to the other side, chasing the other dog. Because in his own perception, there's another. As he said, the way you see things determines your action. Your vision determines your direction. Hello, are you all here? That's why some people will draw close to God. That's why some people will worship in a different way. That's why in everything about God, some people are serious, some are not. Because those who are not have not seen God as one that this that deserves extra commitment. There are other things they see that is more important in life. So they give attention to those things. They draw closer to those things. They spend time with those things. But to God, no, 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 no. Because they have not seen and understood who he is. Your vision of God, you see, the, Isaiah has been a prophet for many years. But the day he saw God in his glory, come on, everything about him changed. See, your vision determines your action. Your vision determines your action. Everyone here interprets the world from your own glass. Because every one of us have our own lenses we wear. Some see the world as a place of pleasure. Everything here is enjoyment. So their life is characterized by what? Enjoyment. Are you in this church? Some see the world as a place, good time. So everything about them is dress well, have fun, hey, hey, you know? And some see this world as a place to make money. Anything that has nothing to do with money or money connotation, nothing. They are not ready to relate with you. Even coming to church, what will I get out of it? When they shake hands with you, oh boy, how much will you pay? Everything is what? Money. Whatever they do must be money coated. And some see the world in very many ways. So the glass you wear matters. But from the passage we read, we have a scripture that says, For God seeth not as man seeth. God does not see people, the world, the way you see it. That's 
what God taught his servant Samuel. When Samuel came, he saw Eliab and he said, the Lord's anointed is before him. He took his oil. Because for him, a king must be tall. A king must be huge, masculine. But the Lord said to him, No, bring down your hands, for I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Samuel had concluded that this is the king. And the Lord said, No, that is not the king. Abinadab came, Shammah came, seven of the sons of Jesse came, most qualified. None was there until Samuel nearly got confused. Then where is the king if all these qualified are not the chosen ones? Who then is the king among? And he turned to Jesse and said, Excuse me. Are all these your sons? He said, that's all my sons. Oh, but wait, there is one. But he's not here. I don't think he's the king. He's somewhere with the sheep. He's the one that keeps the sheep. But in my own assessment, I don't think it. Then somebody said, call me. We are not even going to sit down till he comes. Standing ovation. And they said for David, if I should so say, Jesse must have judged in his own content and assessment. How can David, my forgotten son, the one that maybe was the last? Because Jesse brought the ones that ought to be, you know, three of his sons were with Saul in the army. And the Bible says he was a mighty man of valor himself. So all the ones before him were the, in his own assessment and judgment, the most qualified. But God disqualified all of them. See, the things you value so much may not mean anything before God. The thing you are chasing much after may mean nothing before God. And it's always in that order. I've seen that. It's always in that order. That what we give attention means nothing to God. I was speaking to one of my sons as we drove. I told him, listen, pastors, ministers, lay emphasis on what people should have. Receive. You will have this. You will have this. In the day when God will judge the world, God will not ask anyone, how much did you make on earth? God is not after how much we have. Who we are. God is after what have you done with your life? How have you lived? To please me or to please the people? Because almost all of us are chasing after to have this, to have this, to have this, to have this, so that we become this. And at the end of the day, what we chase after will mean nothing before him. That's how none of the sons the most qualified was accepted by God until the Lord said, I have provided me a king among his sons. So they sent for David. And as David was coming, the Bible says he was ruddy, of a beautiful countenance, looking stocky and somehow, but not tall, not too masculine as to say. And the Lord said to Samuel, Arise, for this is he. The one that was forgotten was the one. God does not see the way you see. God does not judge the way we judge. That is why this morning I am talking about every one of us, including myself, to pray and say, God, let me see the way you see. Because the way you see things determines your response to those things. Whatever you see and it makes sense to you, that's what you run after. <sighs> when you perceive as God, your whole life will change. When you see things the way God sees them, 
your life will never remain the same again. Are you all here? Vision is how you see things around you. Vision is how you judge things the way you see things around you. One thing I want to establish this morning is that the way each one of us see events matters. First, unbelievers, when it comes to seeing spiritually, they are not there. Unbelievers, I talked, I, I talked to you about them last week, and I told you unbelievers are blind. Every unbeliever is blind. Every, E-V-E-R-Y, every. You know why? Because their understanding is darkened. Because the God of this world has blinded their minds. All believers are ignorant of spiritual things. That's why the preaching of the gospel is to them that perish. What? Foolishness. All believers don't know God. No matter how they come to church. And if you're in a church today, you've not given your life to Christ, the Bible says you are not yet there. You see, when you preach to an unbeliever, give your life to Christ, because he's blind, he doesn't see the need to do it. So, he, he, that's why he will not do it. Unbelievers enjoy sin because they see sin as a thing that should be enjoyed. Who is listening to me? Are you still here? Yes, sir. Unbelievers enjoy sin because they see sin as what? Something to be what? Yes, enjoy. They see it as enjoyment. And another question is how do you even see yourself? An unbeliever sees himself. See, the truth is every unbeliever knows he's a sinner. That one, no one argues it. Every unbeliever knows he's a sinner. It's difficult for an unbeliever to say, I am righteous. No, his conscience wouldn't even allow him to say, I am righteous. Especially in the things of God. So they are blind. And that is why Paul said that God sent him to open their eyes. That they might know him, one, and then know the inheritance he has given us in the same. Unbelievers need their eyes to be opened. And almost all of us here need your eyes to be opened. You know why you are not serious with God? Because you, you, there are things you have not seen. I told you the moment Isaiah saw God, after many years of prophecy, he said, I am a man of unclean lips and I live among unclean people. Everything about us is unclean. But this is a holy prophet. But the day he saw God, his vision about himself changed. You need to see God to know who you are. You need a vision of God to determine how and what he has sent you to do. You need a vision about yourself. Some of you are doing other man's job. Some of us are in another man's field. Because you're following the vision of that person. He's a mechanic. And because mechanic gives money, you join. He's in this profession, you join. When you see what others are doing, you've you not asked God, God, is this your vision for my life? You are following another person's vision. You have not define yourself. You know, some people actually have not defined themselves. This is true. Your life has no definition. Because you are just doing what others are doing. All you want is to make money. Making money is not the fulfillment of vision in life. Some people are not happy this morning. Unbelievers are ignorant of the truth because of the blindness of their heart. That's 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. And but let's read Ephesians 4.18. Let's read Ephesians 4.18. Having the understanding that can't be alienated from the life of God, you see, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. <laughs> Check out the qualities of an unbeliever there. 418. Someone that is not in Christ. Someone that is not in Christ. Look at it. 
having their understanding darkened. Hello? Shout Amen. Amen. Shout amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Now ask yourself, don't say it out. Am I a believer or a non believer? A non believer has his understanding. You know what that means? Unbelievers do not understand things the right way. That's why sin is normal before them. Ungodliness is normal. You know what ungodliness is? A man who does not live a godly life. Simple ungodliness when you are not prayerful when you are not when you don't have time for your bible when you don't relate to god in the proper way that's an ungodly man he's busy with himself you know how we know ungodly people they find pleasure in anything outside god they can spend time in the beer bottle in anything that is not god when they come to church they look at time for god because they have something more important God's house is not important. They are just there because maybe they have a need. Maybe, well, let me just go to church. Maybe. But to say that they are there. No, because they are not yet in Christ. So their understanding about God is dark. They are alienated as strangers from the life of God. You see? They are strangers. It's, you should, listen, don't expect a non-believer to be prayerful. Have I not tell you that if a non-believer does not sin, he's a sin? He should sin because he's a non-believer. <laughs> because they are far from God. Ask yourself, am I a non-believer or a believer? Though you are in the church, thank God you are in the church. Thank God. But ask yourself, am I a godly man? Through the ignorance that is in them, all believers are totally ignorant. Oh, the Bible says in the days of ignorance, all believers are ignorant of God. They don't know anything about God. I was talking in the morning and I said, all believers don't have the right to determine what happens in the church. They criticize the church, they are right because they are ignorant of what the church is all about. They tell a pastor should not wear shoes, a pastor should not drive a car. A, who are you in your dark mind to decide what spirituality should be? So I don't argue with unbelievers because their minds are dark. And you see, the same people will rush to a place where they tell them you should marry four wives. And they say, this is the man we like. When they see a pastor that drinks and you know have four and three beer, they say, "Oh, you're the one that is right. You're the one that is right." Because they don't know. Jesus said, "Cast not your pearls before dogs." Come on, are you there? Who is there to shout to better you? Yeah. It's one thing. All believers have their minds darkened. They are ignorant. They are far from God because of the blindness. So this is what all of us were before we all came to Christ. Nobody knows God until salvation came to us. And I'm preaching this morning that you can become a believer. If only you will say, Lord, open my eyes to know who you are. Somebody shout to me, sir. Amen. Yeah. It is impossible to see things as God in the natural way using the human lenses. It is impossible. You cannot see things the way God sees them. Like that dog. I, I wish I had that video. I'll play it for you. How can that God know that this is a glass? <laughs> is it possible? Hello. Do you know what I'm saying? That dog, I told you, there's a dog that ran around in a room. Big glass here, another big glass. He sees himself. He runs thinking he's another dog. Huh? Only to get a hit his head. Oh, uh oh. He runs again. Cry, cry, cry. Oh, he's not another dog. How will that dog know that this is a glass? Because it is what a dog. If that dog wants to know that this is a glass, he needs to upgrade himself to a human being. Talk to me, somebody. The natural man 
understandeth not the things of the spirit. Neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. Some of you laugh at some who speak in tongues. You know why you laugh? Because you are ignorant of what tongues is all about. You don't know. So I'm really telling down here that the only way to see things the way God sees it is to rise to a level where you assume God's own nature. You cannot see as God as a human being. Never. The word is never. You can never see things with God's own eye as human beings. If you want to see as God, you must become a member of God's own family. You must upgrade. And that is where born again comes in. Somebody shout amen. Amen. There's a way some of you see church because of the level you are in the spirit. But when you understand what the church is, your attitude and response to it will change. Did you hear what I'm saying? Can I say it again? There's a way some of you relate to the body of Christ because of the level of your spiritual perception. When you rise, in the spirit and know what the church is you will leave your business and sleep in the church do you know that we had people who were monks when they gave their life to Christ that, that was step one but as they served God and served God and continued they discovered that being with the people and the community was a distraction they said no this God demands more of me I am ready to abandon everything, everything, my family, my life, everything. Forget about Kali Wali, everything out of my life. And they became monks. They left the society and went to live in mountains. They did not eat ordinary food. They don't want to sin. They realized that God is to be served more. Marriage, forget it. They needed more of God. Paul refused to marry because he said marriage will stop him from serving God the way he wants to serve God. See, when you understand what commitment to God means, your attitude will change. Some of you think I'm trying. We're actually not even starting. Yeah, that's the truth about it. We think I'm trying. I'm doing this, I'm doing it. Whereas we've not started. We have come to Christ. Step number one. That's fine. Now let me establish something before I continue. If you must see as God, you need to be at God's own level. Become his own child. Put on his own nature. That is where God again comes in. Somebody shout amen. amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17 If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Are what pass away, all things are become new. And when we look at also the book of Peter, Peter has something to tell us that by his promises we have put on divine nature. Second Peter 1 4. Shall we look at Second Peter 1 4? Let me explain something there. 2 Corinthians 5 17, we know. 2 Peter 1 4. Whereby he has given unto us exceeding and great promises, that by these promises ye might be partakers of what? Divine nature. Look up, everybody. Look up. Look up. Every born again believer has God's own nature. And that is why he or she does not behave the way he used to behave before. Because the new nature has come in. He's not an ordinary person. Did you hear what I've said? Can I repeat what I've said? Every born again person has assumed God's own nature. The old man that was born into the world is not in him. A real believer 
a real believer will never live the way he or she used to live. No. If you see somebody that goes to church and drinks and lives a life, anyhow, he's not a Christian. Tell, tell, tell that person, you are not born again. You don't have the nature of God in you. Challenge him or her. He or she goes to church. When there is a party, she is the first to be there. When there is drinking and everything, he is there. All that the world does, he's there. He's a lie. That guy is not born again. If any man is in Christ, he is what? What has happened to him? So, the old nature is gone. You know why? His perception of life changes because of the nature of God. He runs away from sin. He avoids sin. He avoids ungodliness. He runs towards God. Every day Bible study. Every day prayer meeting. He is after God because that is the nature he has. The old satanic nature is gone that used to drive him to sin and ungodliness. They are gone. Now he is God, 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 God. He does not even have money. He does not care. Why? Everything about him is what? New. He has a new nature. Let that person be in the choir, be behind the pulpit, and does not behave godly, does not respond to this new trend of events. He's an ungodly person. All things must pass away. Talk to me, somebody. So he sees everything differently. Before he used not, he was not used to praying. Now you see him praying, 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 praying. Hello, are you all here? Anybody who have experienced salvation, do I have somebody who have this type of testimony of what I'm talking about? Anybody like that? Before you knew. See, you will not see things the way you see them. Even when he has difficulties, before he used to cry when he doesn't have money, but now when he doesn't have money, he said, no, I have a God. I have a God. My God. You know, he is personal. He relates to God because he has God's own nature. He sees the world in a different way. He is challenged, but he's not discouraged. I'm talking to somebody because he has the new nature of God in him. See, you must be born again, you know? If you want to succeed, not just in life, and to cross this life successfully, you must be born again. That's my main discussion this morning. If you want to see why we speak in tongues, you must be born again. If you want to realize the values of spirituality, to see God, see, Look, look up, look up, everybody. Do you know the way a mechanic sees a spoiled car? It's not the way the owner of that car sees that car, right? When the car is back, <laughs> to you, you put your hands on your head. Hey, hey. And the one crazy young guy who is just there, we said, sorry, Oga, what's your problem? What's the... You see this car? We just came out of the showroom the other day, and he's smoking. I don't really know. I paid so much. He was busting and busting. <laughs> fix it now. You're a rich man, a politician, a one to fix it. And this crazy guy who may not have been properly schooled but have gone through the terrain of training or became an automobile technician. He said, okay, can, 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 I, can I open the bonnet for you? He opens it. The man might not even know how to open the bonnet. He opens and he looks at it, the smoke is coming from one end. He said, excuse me, can, can I help you? Yeah, try your best. You don't really know what these guys are doing. These new cars, da, da, da. Stop talking, you don't know anymore. <laughs> and the guy opens and goes straight. The way he sees your trouble is different from the way you reach tall, huge, heavy man sees it. Why? Because of the information in him and because of who he is. When you are sick, sometimes, sometimes you feel some pains and the thing is so severe, and you get to a doctor sometimes, and the doctor will diagnose their brain. And I will tell you, oh, don't worry, it's not a serious thing. No man will say, <laughs> just go home, take some panadols, sleep very well, get up tomorrow. <laughs> My sister is a, a midwife. He said there are some men when they come, they will diagnose this man, some, some of these rich men. 
in the hospital, they know actually that their problem is preoccupied with their business and everything. So when this stress issue takes a toll on them, when they go to the hospital, so they think that one heavy thing is there. They say one woman came and they checked her, nothing was wrong. So they gave her a tablet, she was not, she said, give me injection, give me injection. So they went and took water and they injected her and said, sleep. She did, when they injected, she said, ah. <laughs> Nice time to sleep, she slept in the hospital for hours and woke up. You see, I told you to give me injection. <laughs> The way doctors see sickness is not the way you see them. True or false? True. That is why you need to become someone else to become who you want to be in Christ so that you will see yourself the way God sees you. Somebody shout to me. Amen. God has an eye on you as a different person. Let me tell you what God sees you. He sees in you as a sinner that can become a saint. No matter the height of your sin, God sees that you can live victoriously. That's the eye God has on you. Somebody shout amen. amen. That's why I'm calling on you to get up from where you are in the spiritual life and come to Christ. Some of you are not yet in Christ. You have not experienced victory upon victory. Victory upon victory. You're still living at a low life. And let me give you, tell you the danger of living at that level. The devil can handle you anyhow. If you're still in your unbelief, the devil can kill you any moment. You know why? You have not entered the covenant where you're protected in Christ. God does not mean swords. Jesus died, and the life that Christ died, the price he paid was a covenant. So the moment you enter into Christ, you are covered by a covenant. The devil cannot have access to you directly. So once you are in Christ, you are divinely protected. Are you all there? So that is why you must enter into Christ this morning and be sure you are in Christ and you have the assurance of salvation in you. Listen, every believer has the assurance of salvation. If you are not sure that you are saved, then you are not a believer. That's the truth about it. If you are not sure. 1986, in my early days of training, there's this question we ask sinners. And I want to ask you that question. And I want you to think about it. Are you sure that if you die right now, if you die now, you will go to heaven? Ask yourself that question. Suppose I die now. You know it is possible to die now. Okay, we will not die now. Suppose Jesus comes now. Some of you are scared of death. Don't be scared of death. Just have your salvation in you. Suppose Christ comes now. Are you sure you will go to heaven? If you're not sure, then you are not yet a believer. Every believer is sure of his salvation because salvation is what is not what you think. You know that you know. Because if any man is in Christ, he's a new person. Shout amen. amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Our concentration this morning is one thing. If you want to see the late, okay, yesterday we took our some of our PA here had a problem. So one of our brothers, we took it to the technicians. And they looked at it and looked and said, okay, I give you days to come back. Now to us, that is a problem. But to them, when we told them this, this, they said, okay, don't worry, this is the price you pay. I said, no, but it's not like the other one. They said, no, 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 this one, the channels are bond, so you pay higher. But this one, the minimum we charge, they already know what the problem is. Am I talking to somebody here? Our concentration this morning is if you want to see as God, you must become a child of God. You can't be a child of men and see things as God. 
And let me tell you why you, your perception should change. The Lord has laid it in my heart this one. If you continue to see things the way you see them, your success in life will be very difficult. I, I say it again. If you continue to have the level, the same perception you have today, your progress in life and in the things of God will be very difficult. You will remain at this level. But if you cross over and give your life to Christ and say, God, change me. I want to be sure I am born again. Friends, life is not all about making money. I want to be very frank with you. Whether you're rich or poor, give your life to Christ. Surrender your life to him now. So that you will be sure. You will see heaven as a place to go. You will value heaven. It will be attractive to you. You know some of you, heaven is not attractive to you. When you preach to some people, don't worry, God will pay you in heaven. Ah, pastor is good. I need my own here. The world is more important to you than heaven. Rewarding ahead of time is not anything to you. And because our pastors don't tell us again the importance of eternal rewards. Some of you don't like today's message. Tell yourself, I must be born again. <laughs> Jesus did not say, you may be born again. He said to Nicodemus, a teacher of the law, you must be born again. You see, when you have God's nature, what is, where are we? Okay, there, yeah, Second Peter says, that by this, you might be partakers of divine nature. You know what it means to have God's own nature? Jesus said, if you drink any deadly thing, he says you shall lay hands on the sick. Someone shall power. That's what I enjoy being a believer. That's when you hear that the devil is there, you don't pray because you know who you are. You are fired yourself. I'm preaching to somebody here. Am I talking? Because you have the nature of God. See, but to be born again is an elevation to God's own height. You see things differently. When people cry and come to you, you may not have to say, kneel down, I'll pray for you and something will happen. And the moment you begin to declare, because you are God talking, things will begin to happen. I love to pray for people because I know when I pray for you, not because I'm a pastor, but because I know the nature I have. Somebody say divine nature. Divine nature. It's, powerful. it's powerful. Talk to me, say I need it. I need it. To, be to be transformed. To be promoted. To be, promoted. To be elevated. Yes. Tell yourself, I must be born again. Yes. You know, when you hear about born again, you think it's live, live and uh, drinking, live humanizing. See, when you are born again, all those things becomes useless to you because you, if you have if you have Kuwait dinner and someone has sefa you have one thousand Kuwait dinner and someone comes with you coming with ten I have ten ten thousand din sefa see I come you are not normal come come. 1,000 Kuwaiti dinner is 12,000 dirhams. And then you continue to melt it before you get to that level. And the person says, I have money. You only have one. It has a lot. See, when you are born of the Spirit, you are somewhere. Talk to me, somebody. Yes, sir. You can handle anything. See, the most dangerous person on earth is the believer. You can see him cry today. Tomorrow you see him jumping. Yes, sir. I'm talking to somebody. Because he does not see sickness as sickness. He sees sickness as something I can talk to. Stop! And the sickness will stop. He declares and money comes. He sees the world with a different sunglass or eyeglass. Am I talking to somebody? Tell yourself, I must be born again. That's what I have come to offer you this morning. Stop seeing yourself as such. See, a believer can never and will never and shall never and will never be frustrated when you understand what you have in you, who you are. In Christ Jesus, we are lifted up. You must be born again. So that your life will change. So that you'll be happy. I told that my, my son in the car, I told him in the days 
of our growing in Christ. We were poor, so poor that we didn't even know we were poor. You don't understand. We were so poor. In the scripture, you know, we didn't have one musical instrument. But after the meeting, we are drunk in the spirit that those who went for party can never compete with us. So joyful. Happy. Because Christ is in us. Talk to me, somebody. The joy of the Lord supersedes every earthly joy. I'm talking to somebody. Tell yourself, I must be born again. I want you to see things differently from today. You are missing a lot. Because you're seeing the world with your own lenses and glasses. Anywhere you go, Dubai is difficult. How can Jesus say that Dubai is difficult? I've told you, or if this land becomes so difficult, they will leave it for me. So difficult. I'm, t- I'm not kidding. If it becomes so difficult that people don't leave here, God sent me here. I told you, this is my Jerusalem in the morning. Right? And the Bible said, I will see the good of Jerusalem. <laughs> you too, if you are here, you will see the good of Jerusalem. Amen. Are you here? Yes, see, tell yourself, I must be born again. You see, the new man gives you the divine nature, empowerment in the spirit. Gives you wisdom on how to operate. There are things you don't value again because you don't need them. You don't, like as I said, you don't need that safer because you have the real money. True or false? You don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. You travel and someone say, I have 10 million. You have only <laughs> maybe... 20,000 Kuwait dinner. And it's Friday. I have 10 million. Say, now come, let, come, let me help you. Because it's ignorant. You know, unbelievers think they know. Unbelievers think they are okay. They are sick. Like that guy with lesser valued currency is sick. In Christ, we are proud and confident. We are sure of heaven. And we are sure of success. We might not be flowing and overflowing with wealth, but we overflow with the spirit. Hey, I'm talking to somebody. Because we have the nature. Hey, last We have the, I told you one day in the scripture, you know, one of those prayer meetings. Hello, are you out here? Wave your hands, wave your hands. We finished praying, and this brother, because of the height, all of us were flowing, came out of the prayer meeting. It was an all-night prayer meeting, but we closed by 5.30. And this brother trekked from here. To at least a kilometer before he asks himself, Where is my sempers? From home they did that, he said, Where is my sempers? Somewhere. Somewhere. There is joy in the Lord. Are you here with me? You must be born again. To see the world the way God created it. All of you young men here, when you see a girl pass, hey, now nah, this girl, nah, nah, hey, hey. because of who you are, the, the level you are, it's, you know, like children, small things, toy. Children cry for toy. Will you cry for a toy? No, yeah, but look at them there. There are things you touch, hey, the, that place will scatter. Because of the level of them, the, the, because of their level in nature, when you are not in Christ, everything attracts you. Everything annoys you. You are almost defeated. But when you have the new nature, you are confident. Paul wrote, he said, though our outward person is destroyed, yet our inward man is renewed every day. We are confident that he that began this good work in us will finish it. Come on, I'm talking to someone. Tell yourself, I need the new nature. Tell yourself, I must upgrade. To see things the way God sees them. Say amen. amen. In conclusion, as David was coming, the Lord said to Samuel, This is he. He heard God. A believer is one who is linked to God's own mouth. You didn't hear me. <laughs> A believer is one who is linked to God's own what? Mouth. You know why he's linked? There is a D and A. That binds two of them. He is the father. We are his own children. The same spirit that is.
see Christ is in us. The new nature is God in us. Shout to me. Amen. You are born of God. You came out of Christ by the process of his birth. Being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible, by the living word of God that abides forever. So, the word gave birth to you. You can't be anything else. He that is one of the flesh is flesh, uh -huh. and he that is one of the spirit is what? Spirit. You can disappear and appear. Yes, sir. I feel finished finish preaching and he disappeared. See, you are anything, anytime, anywhere. You must be born again. That's what I bring to you this morning. You must be born again. So that you will see your trouble that is not a trouble. Did you hear me? So that you see that Dubai is a good place. Talk to me, somebody. Can I hear you say that this land is a good land? Some of you are not serious. Do I have anybody here? Can I hear you say this is a good land? Say, I will see the good of Jerusalem. Tell yourself, I will succeed. The Lord brought me here, not to frustrate me, but to bless me. I will see the good of Jerusalem. Shout a better amen. Yeah. And because God, he will, God will give his word, he will cause you to see the good of Jerusalem. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you must be born again. Rise up as we pray. Hey! 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 He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. Jesus said, Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Look up to God and say, Father, I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you, Lord. I need your spirit in my life. Father, change and transform me. Father, change and transform me. Father, change and transform me. Pray that prayer. Now, if you are ready born again, say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Boy, pray that prayer for the church of Ephesus and say, Lord, open their eyes that they will know the hope of your calling. Pray and say, Lord, let me know. Open my eyes that I will know the hope of your calling that I will fulfill my ministry and my mission. If you're sure of your salvation, thank God. I want to give opportunity to anyone here who is not sure. You know for sure that you are not sure of your salvation. Don't look at anybody. Just come now. I will pray for you that from today, from today, God will bless in you the assurance of salvation. Come, let me pray with you. Come. Don't look at anybody. Let that person come. Raise your hand. Let me pray with you. Raise your hand. You know you are not too sure. Thank you, my brother. Come and kneel down. Don't worry. Come, come. Don't look at anybody. Come, come, come. Kneel down here. Don't look at anybody. If you die now, kneel down. If you die now, they will bury you. Nobody will laugh at you. If you know you are sure, you don't have this assurance. Uh, let me tell you, if you die where you are, it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Come and kneel down here. If you are not sure, if you are not sure, let's pray together and ask God that today Jesus will come into your life. Now, raise your voice and pray and say, Lord, I am here that in me the assurance of salvation will be given. Come and kneel down. Some of you are still out there. Not sure whether you die today. Where you are going. You are not sure. You know you are not sure. And you are still there. Come, come, come. Don't waste time. Come, come, come and join them. Don't be ashamed of everybody. Satan is blocking you from joining. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Don't be ashamed. I'm calling you. This is your chance. This is your chance. The Lord is asking you to come forward. Surrender your life. Surrender your life. And tell him, Lord Jesus, give me the assurance from today. I want to be sure. I want to be sure. I want to be sure. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Even some of you who are ashamed, I'll die. Pray that prayer. Say, Lord, give me the assurance that I will begin to see things the way you see them. The scripture says, He that is born of God overcometh the world. When you are born of God, you will be an overcomer. When you are born of God, you will become an overcomer. When you are born of God, you will become a victor. When you are born of God, your life is transformed. When you are born of God, your life will advance. 
when you're born of God, new things will happen around you. The devil will leave you alone. Angels will come and minister to you. When you're born of God, you will experience the extraordinary. Tell yourself, I must be born again that I will see things the way God sees them. It is only God's nature that can see things the way God sees them. And you need that nature. And that nature comes when you are born again. That nature becomes a reality when you are born again. Those of you kneeling down here, ask, pray, and say, Lord Jesus, I totally surrender my life. I want to be sure from today. I want to be sure from today. I want to be sure, Lord. I want to be sure. I want to be sure. I want to be sure. I want to be sure, sure, Lord. From today, Lord, I want to be sure. Father, I want to be sure. Lord Jesus, I want to be sure. I don't want to die in my sin. I don't want to die in my sin. Lord, I want to be sure. I want to be sure. Lord, I want to be sure. Fill my heart with assurance. Fill my heart, oh Lord, with your assurance of salvation. Lord, I want to be sure. Those of you who are standing, if you know you're born again, pray and say, Lord, open my eyes to know why you have called me. Open my eyes, Lord. Pray that prayer and say, Lord, I want to see, I want to see your plan for my life. I want to know why you have chosen me. I want to know why my name is in the book of life. Father, open my eyes, open my eyes. I want to see beyond where I am today. Pray that prayer. Tell him, Lord, I want to see beyond where I am today. Open my eyes, oh Lord, open my eyes. Pray that prayer. This is the and he wants to change your perception into God's own plan for your life. We shall see what God has called you for. We shall see the doors God has opened for you. We shall see the direction God wants you to go. We shall see the future. We shall see victory. We shall see in advance. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus. Holy name we have prayed. Look up every one of you. Those of you kneeling down, continue to pray. Those of you standing, I mean what I'm saying. You need to ask God one thing. Lord, open my eyes. <coughs> open my eyes. To know who you are. Open my understanding. To know you better. Lord, open my eyes. I want to see you. I want to see you. When Isaiah saw God, his life changed. Lord, I want to see you in your glory. Father, and the direction you want me to go. All of you standing out there, pray that prayer. While I pray for the all of you. Those of you kneeling down and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my whole life to you. Say it now. Say, I surrender my whole life to you. Without exception. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Give me the grace from today to be sure of my salvation. Say, oh Lord, give me the grace. Fill my heart with assurance of salvation. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I want to be sure of my salvation. I want to be sure of who you are. Open my eyes to know you more and more. Write my name in the book of life and deliver me from my sins. Thank you, Lord, for hearing these prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. And the whole church shouts a living amen. I want ushers to come and give all of them here the visitor's card. If you're in this church for the first time, raise your hand. Anybody like that? Today is the first day you are coming to church. Anyone like that? Give them, give them. Anyone here who is in church for the first time, kneeling down here?
Now the card they have given you is new commerce card. I want you to fill it. Write your name and number and, and give it to the ushers and return. They will return it to me. I'm going to have time with all of you outside the Friday meetings we do have. I want to pray for you right now that God will keep you until Jesus comes. Amen. Father, I commit these souls into your hands. I pray, Lord Jesus, that from today, from today, from today, new things will begin to happen in their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I pray that a change will begin in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, transform the lives of these ones in the name of Jesus. Amen. I commit them, Lord, into your hands, and I pray, Lord, that they will not backslide. Amen. The enemy will not take them away. Amen. Father, keep them until the day of the purchase possession in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift them, Lord, with your own hands. And every challenge in their life, Father, give them victory. Amen. You say, whosoever is born of God overcome the world. Father, now that they are born of you, Father, give them victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Daddy, thank you, thank you for it is done. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now, take those cards, go back to your seats. Fill them and give it to me. Return it to me before you leave. God bless you. Somebody jump your hands for the Lord Jesus. Somebody jump your hands for the Lord Jesus. Five meter, five meter, five meter. Rise up, everybody. Rise up, everybody. Rise up. Shall we all rise up? Shall we all rise up? I want to pray for everyone here that our eyes shall be open. Are you with me? Yes, sir. If there is anything you need now, it is that God will open your eyes to know why he has called you. Raise your two hands. Just lift your two hands and say, Oh Lord, oh Lord. I surrender my life to you as your child. As child. Open, my open my eyes to know the hope of your calling. Direct me in the path and in the way you want me to go. I don't want to make a mistake in my life anymore. Oh Lord, direct me. Pray that prayer right now before you bring down your hands. Lift your hands and pray and say, Lord, lead me, lead me to, to follow the direction you want me to go. Father, lead me, lead me, lead me, Jesus. Lead me, lead me, lead me. Let me go in the direction you want. Let me follow the direction you want. Father, lead me in the paths you want me to go. Open my eyes, O oh Lord, to know the hope of your calling. Lord, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss your calling. I want to know why you have called me. Open the eyes of my understanding. Open the eyes of my understanding. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. I say again, who is in this church for the first time? I just want to pray for you as a person. Anybody like that? Today is the first day you're coming to this church. I just want to bless you and you go home rejoicing. Amen. Now, commit, if nobody, okay, then put your hands, everybody, like this. Tell, say, pray this prayer to say, Oh Lord, oh Lord I, receive my package, I receive my package, which you have kept for me. Kept for me. Today, Today I, pray, I pray you release it. You release the it. blessing you have reserved for me. Today, Today, release it release into my hands. Raise your voice and pray that prayer. Be it physical, financial, spiritual. Lord, I receive the package you have for me. I receive the package you have for me. I receive the package you have for me. Every package you have for me. Today, Lord God Almighty, I have a program today. 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 I have a program today.
Tell God that which you desire and it shall be in your hands for this week. That 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 which you desire that He will do for you. Pray and say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lord, I am going up today rejoicing. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I decree the release of your blessing which you have obtained for everyone here individually, Lord, that it be released right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Receive your own package in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Receive your package of joy in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You will go home from here rejoicing. Yeah. I said you will go home from here rejoicing. Yeah. You will walk home and match home rejoicing. Yeah. Father, thank you for it is done. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Amen. Let the Lord lift up his countenance on you. Amen. And grant you grace and peace all the days of your life. Amen. So shall it be that every blessing you have received shall be made permanent. Amen. The enemy will never touch it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, our eyes having been opened shall never be closed. Amen. We shall see visions and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Amen. That it lead us on today. Amen. As we continue in the missions, let more anointing be released upon us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Thank you, Father. for it is done. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.